After four years and 40,000 miles of earthquakes on this bad boy, we're gonna go nose to tail and see if anything's come loose. This is gonna be a short video on what I think is actually a really important topic. Now you've heard us use the term earthquake many, many times when we talk about this RV going down the road. In fact, we did a video on the Moride independent suspension, and when we did that, we took a ride inside the RV both before and after. For the record, we do love our independent suspension. Not only does it make the ride better in here, it makes it better in the truck also. We were really surprised about that. Here comes some railroad tracks. Okay, ready? Here we go. We're going over there at 30 miles an hour. <laughs> oh, yeah. And while our independent suspension certainly helps and makes it a much smoother ride back here, there still is a vibration. So what's the big deal? Pieces of trim fall down, little things get loosened, maybe a water fitting, those can be important. Uh, but what I'm primarily concerned with and focusing on now is the electrical stuff. For the record, the reason I'm not that concerned with the water issue is because we have water sensors everywhere. We've got them below our sinks, we've got them in the basement. Anywhere we have water lines, we have water detection sensors that are connected to our ring alarm system. Separate video on that, I'll link it below. But that will let us know immediately when there is a leak. What is not known is do we have loose electrical connections? Now, we have seen online over the course of the years various posts on Facebook and Instagram and places like that of electrical boxes where the neutral or one of the hot connections gets loose, jiggles, starts arcing, and again, that's a big deal. So today, we're going to apply an ounce of prevention. So we're going to go from nose to tail in this RV, all the places I know of that have electrical connections, safety first. Definitely, definitely turn off all of your power, disconnect your batteries. You wanna be safe when working on this electrical stuff. If you have a voltmeter, even after disconnecting your electrical, test it out just to make sure. Maybe you've got an inverter hidden somewhere. You want these things to be dead circuits when you work on them. As I say that, you're probably gonna see when I go and work in the front bay, I didn't disconnect 12 volt entirely. I'm comfortable with that. It's a risk I'm willing to take, but be careful if you're not 100% sure with what you're doing. If you're even just 1% unsure, turn off all power. Now, most of the stuff that's up there has only been up there about 10 months, so I've recently worked on it. I didn't expect a lot to be loose up there. In fact, the solar controllers were all good, the 400 Class T fuse, the Smart Shunt, the inverter. If you remember back when we put the inverter in, those are all push lock connections, so I wasn't worried about those. Those are kind of like shark's teeth or alligator teeth where uh, you know, you push it in and pulling it out will actually just make it tighter. So I'm not too worried about those, but I did check the DC connections. Those were all good. All of our battery connections have lock nuts on those. So I did check those, but those are all fine also. But one thing up in there that I had never messed with that turned out to be very loose was that DC shutoff connection on that wall between the front bay and the basement. Ooh, those are a little bit loose. Yeah, those are loose. I've never touched these before. And very loose, holy cow. That was pretty loose. I also checked all of the connections going to the hydraulic system, the electrical connections. I checked the hydraulic connections also, but I think it's gonna be pretty obvious if we get a leak on one of those. I just checked them for any hydraulic fluid. So I am pretty good to go up here now, and I did find some loose connections. Moving from the front bay aft going into the basement, here are some of the locations that I really wanted to see, primarily the ATS. If you remember our water filter video, I uh, put in a bypass and made it easy to take those filters out. So I did that, got them out of the way. I checked our surge guard. It was perfect. I could barely get any turns on that. So that's really good, whatever they're using to, to keep those connections tight because I haven't touched that in probably about three years. So I was glad to see that was nice and tight. Moving down into the ATS. An ATS, if you're not familiar, is an automatic transfer switch. It has generator priority. Its whole purpose in life is to switch to generator power when that's detected, and when that's not detected, it switches to shore power, whether it's there or not. So I wanted to check in there because that's one of the problem locations that I've seen online. All of your RV's power is going through that transfer switch. So when it 
develops a little bit of an open and an arc, it can be a real problem. Surprisingly, even though I've worked on that ATS fairly recently, some of my connections were quite a bit loose. The outbound connection, which I haven't touched since we put our first inverter in, so that's been over three years, that had quite a few loose connections. Mm. This connection has a little bit of play in it. These lines here have not been touched in a long time. These are the lines that go out to the inverter. Nothing bad yet, but the whole point of this is to snug them all down and get to them before they get so bad that a wire pops out and starts arcing and creating sparks and fire. From there, I went over to the passenger side of the RV, and in that side, there's primarily just control modules for the one control system. So it's you know low amperage, DC connections, turning on lights, uh, things like that, automatic generator start, all that good stuff. So I just got in there, made sure all those were snug. If one of these came loose, it would probably just cause something to not work, but it still could spark and burn the boards and things like that. So all those were good, thankfully. From there, I moved inside to our distribution panel, our distribution box or breaker box. Now, this thing is set up so that you've got your two hots in. Again, this is a 50 amp RV, so we've got two 50 amp legs and a neutral. So this is our main distribution panel down here. You can see that our hot one and hot two come into these main breakers and then get distributed out through here. Uh, also, you can see our main DC positive connections coming down here. We also have a neutral up here for the AC side. So I'm just gonna go through all of these and make sure they are snug. This is a place inside this box where I have seen many pictures of arced and sparked and burned out stuff. So I wanted to get in there and check that for sure. And I did find a couple of loose connections, not real loose, but again, I would rather catch them halfway loose before they get all the way loose. So in that same distribution box are all of the DC connections. So you can see the DC connections coming in and then they're fused going out to the other various systems like our fuel pump, our furnace, everything that's DC powered goes through there also. So this is one place for sure you wanna check. Another thing you want to be aware of and look for in here, particularly if you have a used RV that might have been worked on, this should not happen from the factory, but you want to check for any double tapped breakers. Each one of these breakers should only have one line going to it. If you've got one in here where it's got double tapped, it's got two lines going to it, uh, might be something you might want to dig into a little bit further. It shouldn't be like that. Uh, same thing on your DC connections down here. You don't want any double taps. I've also seen a couple of instances online where outlets themselves have trouble. I pulled a few of ours and ours are pretty well sealed with wires going in. I didn't want to start taking those things apart. Those things are pretty fragile as they are. So I didn't worry about the actual outlets, but I did check a couple and they were fine. Now, if I were to just do this from start to finish, I could probably do it again without filming maybe a half an hour's worth of work. If you only check two things, check your ATS and your distribution panel. But if you can, just kind of give everything a once over. Maybe do this once a year, maybe in the summer before you go out or bring your RV out of storage. Check these things out because electrical problems are no joke. They can start fires and be a real problem. So get out there, check your electrical connections before they become a problem. If you like this video, please show us by clicking that like button. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you next time.